Hello people, it's the cat, and we're back in Cuphead once again. This time I'll be doing my full ranking of all the bosses in the game using tiers that go from bad, mediocre, decent, good, great and amazing. And this isn't really based on expert or regular versions of these fights, it's kind of a mix of both. If the fight sucks on regular, then I'll just look at the expert version instead. So what makes for a good boss in Cuphead? Well, to me the most important aspects are gameplay number one, visuals number two, music number three, and I guess charm number four. Like, think of Werner Wurman, there's just something charming about it, right? It's also got good quality animations and music, and the gameplay is pretty fun. That's an example of a good Cuphead boss. So let's begin at number 25. But we're not starting from the bad tier, and not even the mediocre tier, but from decent. Because I really don't think any boss in this game is bad. Goopy Legrand, the first Elden Lord, a menace to the lands of Inkwell Isle. He has such Herculean strength that he has to hold back on using his true power in his first phase. Once you've proven yourself worthy of his attention, he'll stop playing around. Now I fight just warrior! And now his battle mechanics are just out of control. Instead of moving from left to right and doing a punch every once in a while, he now moves from left to right and does a punch every once in a while. And just when you foolishly think you've beaten him, you learn that not even death will stop him. He'll come and fight you from beyond the grave. He's such a goddamn Giga Chad. And his difficulty apexes here. Instead of moving from left to right and doing a punch every once in a while, he now moves from left to right and does a smash move from time to time. Probably the hardest boss I've fought since Soldier of God. Rick. So Rootback is a group of three evil vegetables. A cabbage, an apple, and a hamster. This will most likely be your first boss, so that excuses the lack of challenge. It's still behind every other boss besides Goopy because it's just not that interesting. The first two phases especially don't do anything for me. The animations are good at least, especially for Ollie Bulb, who people used to call Weepy and get mad at me for not knowing that that's his name. But the Cuphead show confirmed the name, so get fucked you all. I do like the carrot though, mostly because it's the only phase that has more than one thing going on at once. So you can't just do it in your sleep. And there's also some value added to this boss with the secret radish face, which is pretty rad. Despite being the queen of sweets, this boss tends to leave a sour taste in my mouth. At first it's like a low budget version of King Dice where you fight three mini bosses, none of which are particularly fun. And there's some RNG involved since you're bound to be better at some of them than others, and there might be one or two that are kryptonite to you and it's always a shitty feeling when you get the worst one. There's a time and a place for RNG, but for this boss I'd prefer consistency. There's also a floating platform that serves zero purpose until the final phase. Like, why is it even there before that? Does anyone actually use this? It kinda just gets in the way. The candy castle is pretty neat, and finally the platform serves a purpose, and I like pairing the rolling candy whatever you call it, and I don't really mind the spinning heads the Baroness throws, it would be too easy without it. So at least the final phase is always consistent, but is it great? Does it elevate the boss to top tier quality? Nah, it's just fine. <laughs> Sally stage play is our first good tier fight, and honestly, if it wasn't for the secret phase they added in an update, it would be crowding the decent tier instead. Originally, the fight was just underwhelmingly easy throughout, with the exception of phase 2, which did up the challenge a little bit. But then the following two stages completely deflated any resemblance of difficulty. I did always like the setting with the literal stage play, and now with the secret phase we get more of it. It's unlocked by jumping on both of the baby props in phase 1, so this is even more ideal now as Chalice. It will cause the groom to be crushed to death and change the plot of the play, as well as the gameplay for the next two phases. Well, not really by much for phase 2. Instead of babies throwing bottles, you have nuns throwing sticks. So it's really mostly just a visual change. But it didn't really need changing anyway since it was already the hardest phase. So I'm glad they spent most of their efforts in making stage 3 different. It always felt very slow and that there was just a missing mechanic somewhere. So having a murderous baby sending fireballs at you periodically does pretty much fix it. However, the finale for the boss remains the same and it's a letdown every time. If there's one boss in the game that straight up makes me feel dizzy after a while, it would be the stupid blue chicken. Especially on Expert, oh, oh my god. Now I know what it's like to be a war veteran because this fight has left me eggshell shocked. 
The feather spam phase can also leave me disoriented if it lasts too long, but nothing so far is as awkward as this big bird brain baby bitch that flies around all over the screen with spinning eggs rotating around him. And not only do they rotate, but they also close in and out. Have fun figuring out your own placement during all this nonsense. The final phase is also really awkward positioning wise because of how the boss is at the bottom of the screen and also keeps moving from left to right. So sticking by his ass with the normal gun might not be a good idea since you can get trapped, but if you stick above him to drop bombs on him you're in the epicenter of all sorts of trash. So overall, I probably sounded pretty negative about this fight, but I still have it in the good tier because as annoying and disorienting as it can be, I don't think there's anything legitimately bad about this boss. Individually I don't love any of the phases, but at least on regular, if you just go through the fight as quickly as possible, it can be a fun ride. So pretty much everyone in the whole world hates Room Honey Bottoms with a passion, but I never really understood it. I don't think it's a drastically worse fight than most in the game. In fact, I think gameplay-wise it's better than some of the bosses I ranked higher. I don't think it ever gets particularly exciting and fun, but definitely not the garbage tier people make it out to be. And I kinda like the platforming, personally. I think it adds fair intensity to the fight and makes the otherwise uninteresting attacks actually matter. You cuphead babies are spoiled if you think this is the worst boss ever made. Trust me, there are far worse creations out there. But the reason I still have it placed near the bottom is because I don't really love anything about it either. Except the music, it's really grown on me over the years. But you could say that about almost any boss. But the theme, the visuals, the charm... Eh. It's just very yellow and the tone of the fight isn't really all that delightful. It's just depressed workers getting murdered for no reason. It's not as lighthearted, goofy and creative like most of the other fights. <laughs> I contemplated putting Calamaria below Honey Bottoms, but I value my life enough not to upset you guys like that. Let's start out by talking about what works here. The entire phase 1. It's a really great fight. She has tons of variety in her moves, they combo well together, it's never bullshit. The theme of aquatic life and her using fish as guns is wonderful. The music rocks, visuals are nice, and she has semen in her mouth. Unfortunately, it's all downhill from there. When she brings in the eels and starts using the petrifying gaze, it's just a shit show. Even if conceptually it is cool. No one ever likes petrifying mechanics in video games, especially when they're unavoidable. I mean, you could hide by her forehead, but it's such a tiny space you can't realistically avoid all the projectiles coming from the eels. And before you start an argument for why you think the mechanic is okay, answer me this. Is it fun? Do you actually enjoy it? Does it add any value to the boss? Cause I really don't think so. It's still manageable enough to some extent because the projectiles move so slow, so I don't think it absolutely ruins the face, but I do absolutely hate the finale. You're restricted to fighting her in the depths of Satan's tight asshole with unclear hitboxes on the edges of the tunnel, while you still have the near unavoidable petrifying mechanic complicating things. Sometimes you just won't be able to break out of it in time and get hit, and it feels like shit. Another surely controversial placement would be putting Grimm this low. But I think Grimm and Calamaria share the problem of having a great first face and everything else being subpar. Platforming, like with the rumor, does add intensity and variety to the fight and I'm completely okay with it. And unlike Honey Bottoms, I do think Grimm has all the charm in the world. I mean, he's a stuttering, goofy, cute dragon with flawless animations, great theme, cool 3D background. I love him. But phase 2 is always either a complete joke or just annoying. And it really all just depends on which shot you're using. And sometimes you don't even really need to dodge the fireballs, they just jump off without even aiming at you. But other times they're like homing missiles. Either way, if you equip lover or crack shot, you'll be done here within like 15 seconds. But I don't think the last phase really makes up for the previous one. The boss has two mechanics. One of which is continuously shooting fireballs that will split into four smaller ones if you shoot them. Which makes almost every shot in the game suck for this fight. The only two that work well are Charge and Lobber. Never use Spread. Dear God. Never again. Without Charge and Lobber you just have to wait until he's done spitting out fireballs and does the flamethrower move. So you can work around the annoying mechanics which does make it better than Calamaria for me, but even then I don't think it's ever fun after the first phase. <laughs> Captain Brinybeard is a dumb fat pirate who has befriended aquatic life such as sharks, octopuses, dogfish and squids. 
Now there's a reason why I made sure to mention that gameplay is number one, because everything else about Briny Beard is honestly not that great for me. I don't think he's particularly charming or visually interesting, the music is one of the least great ones in the game, but the majority of the fight itself is great. I like the steady increase in difficulty especially. He starts out having just the barrel and the octopus gun. Once you've tickled him, he starts calling sea life to his aid. Once you've tickled him even more, his ship starts spewing cannonballs at you, all while everything else is still happening. It's a lot to handle at once, but I think the way they made the fight introduce each mechanic one by one makes it fair. However, I'm not putting the boss in the great tier because once the ship takes center stage, it's a pretty dull and annoying fight. It's not bullshit, I just don't really like it. And yes, I know you can parry the goddamn laser. I've known this for years. You can stop letting me know already. Thank you. So next we have Cagney Carnation, which is for some reason the fan favorite boss to this day. Um, why? What am I missing? The song? Sure, it's nice, but what about the fight? The dance he does? Sure, it's cute, but what about the fight? The sex appeal? Sure, but what about the... Wait a minute, what? People wanna fuck Cagney? FUCKING QUIZ! Okay, but what about the actual fight? It's pretty good. Good enough to be middle of the road good tier, but not great tier. And absolutely not amazing tier. This is one fight I prefer on regular over expert as well, even though usually it's the other way around. Usually I prefer a challenge, but in this case it's kind of annoying how most of phase 1 he just spams a single move. Also, there's this mechanic with some seeds being parryable, but I always found it really awkward to parry stuff from below when they're quickly falling down. And if you fail to parry, you're punished for it by having extra enemies spawn. I mean, is it just me who this always happens to? Still, it's overall fine, I think it's one of the better balanced early game bosses. I like the last stage where you're forced to use the platforms, though I do wish it was a little more complex. They had a good idea for it, but never went far enough with it to make it truly great. <laughs> when you first fight Dr. Carl's robot, your first thought will probably be, what the fuck is going on? There's just so much on the screen happening at once, it's overwhelming. But you know what? I like that about it. I like how you start to piece together what's going on and how to best approach it. And now I feel like a master surgeon cutting the robot apart. I like how whenever you break any weapon of the robot, it will replace it with another. So you gotta choose which base version of the weapon you want gone first. I always go for the laser because the bolts he replaces it with is way easier. And it's just way smoother to go back and forth between the chest and the stomach and keep the boss's minions at bay. So we have another great first phase. Second is kinda bleh, whatever. It's not bad, but I don't really have anything positive to say about it either. Could have been better, could have been worse. Then the rest of the fight has the doctor laughing like a maniac while turning the whole screen into a bullet hell, and to this day I'm bad at it. Part of it is because I'm a greedy fuck and I want to stay close to the boss so my shots won't be blocked by the floating walls, but up close I obviously have less time to react to the projectiles. But it's a decent fight, I do think it lasts a little too long and starts to get exhausting if you're stuck on this boss, which you probably will be, because it's one of the hardest fights in the game. But having such a strong start does ensure that Dr. Carl's robot remains a solid good tier fight for me. <laughs> Ribion Croaks is by far the hardest Isle 1 boss and also by far the worst episode in the Cuphead show, which I mostly watched to laugh at how bad I thought the show would be, but turns out it's kinda okay. But that episode was painfully unfunny and I can't look at these two without thinking about it. But when I switch my brain off, I do enjoy the boss. At first it's pretty standard, you just dodge some balls, jump over frogs, kill fireflies, the usual. But then we get our first instance of Cuphead War, which somehow results in the Frog Brothers turning into a giant slot machine. This to me marked the moment where I realized Cuphead was going to be a fever dream of a game. Now usually I complain about RNG and that's all this face is. But you know what? I can't complain. It's an actual slot machine. What do you expect? If any boss should be RNG, it's this. It's a fun fight, and it's memorable in its placement early in the game, and who doesn't love Incest War? Now that's what the Cuphead show was missing. There's two kinds of people in the world. Those who think clowns are funny, and those who think clowns are scary. Either way, that will work to this boss's benefit. It's either a funny fight where you watch a clown clowning around the whole fight, making funny faces and voices, 
or you'll feel like you're stuck in a horror game fighting a dead rising boss who's absolute nightmare for you. I'm more leaning towards the latter myself. I think Beppy is a fucking molester. Anyway, he has great variety all throughout. He begins with a bumper car, turns into a balloon that shits out more balloons while trying to run you over with trains. Then he rides an annoying fucking horse before falling down and turning into a carousel. I feel like this is the same kind of situation as with Wally Warbles where there isn't really that one face that I think is absolute fire and I love it. It's more about the wild ride, no pun intended. You'll notice that with a lot of bosses that have more than three faces. It means each face is brief and not necessarily anything great on its own, but as a whole it's a thrill. Even after the DLC, King Dice stands out as the most unique boss in the entire game. This is perfect execution when it comes to presentation, even if it lacks interesting gameplay. You're playing a sort of mini board game where you have to roll the dice to move to the finish line, and you'll end up fighting a minimum of three mini bosses along the way. You'd think this would be the most RNG heavy fight in the game considering the casino setting, but the only RNG really is where the extra hearts are placed. That's right, even the dice itself has set patterns. So you'll see three hot icons by random mini bosses, so if they end up landing on a particular fight you really don't want to do, you can just restart until it's looking more favorable. There is definitely imbalance in the mini bosses. They generally start to get harder towards the end, but for some reason the one at number 8, fittingly the 8 ball, is just a free kill. You just stand and shoot up. That's it. Compare that to the goddamn chimp, or the racehorse skeleton, or the fuck off rabbit. But in a way it does make it more meaningful to master rolling the dice correctly, cause you don't wanna land on those assholes. So the only real complaint I have is that I don't really enjoy any of the 10 possible fights. Even including King Dice who boils down to just a parry skill check. But again, the presentation, the amount of work they must have put in each mini boss and background, it's all really impressive and even without excellent gameplay I still think it's overall a great tier boss. So if you've been around the channel for a while, you've probably noticed my sentiment about Jimmy. Fuck you, Jimmy. I've always complained about how bullshit and annoying it is, so having him land in the great tier is probably a bit of a surprise. But I made those comments about Jimmy like 40 years ago, and now when I replay it, I find myself having fun again. The only part I don't like a whole lot is the intro phase, but even then it's only if he pulls out the treasures. I don't mind the swords or the cats. Plus, Jimmy has five fucking phases. It's a whole adventure in and of itself. I don't think the pillars or the coffin are spectacularly done battles or anything, but they're brief and they just add to the whole coolness factor. And I have to appreciate the coffin for the amount of thumbnails I've gotten out of it. The final two phases, however, is when the fight gets actually intense. Everything else before was just to show off how good they are at animating, but now it's your turn to do something impressive by simply surviving. I found parrying the puppet's bullets really satisfying, it lets you build up super very quickly, and nothing is more gratifying than using the plane's nuke right on the boss's noggin. And the final phase is where most of my troubles used to come from, but I've already gone through all five stages of grief, so I'm at acceptance now. I'm completely okay with it. I guess something just finally clicked and now I can do it just fine. Also, as if having five phases wasn't enough, he also has a secret phase. So overall, Jimmy does live up to his name, as he is great. Okay, I know I might be overrating Phantom Express by putting it this high, but I don't care. Even though from beginning to end it's mid-tier gameplay, the aesthetics and music alone elevate its top tier quality for me. And while none of the bosses have particularly interesting moves, you do have the little platform that adds a unique flavor to the whole thing. In phase 1 you just try to stay as far from the boss as possible, so you won't get dicked by his eyeballs up close. And the new shot, Converge, makes this such a joke, I love it. They can't even spawn! The big skeleton conductor on the other hand, no pun intended, will force you to move the platform to avoid the hand slams. I actually think Chalice retroactively makes this fight better, because it's just more comfortable to parry with her dash. Otherwise you'd have to jump, and that would risk bumping your head on the conductor and taking damage. Then phase 3 is kind of the same deal, where you have to move the platform to avoid the boss's attacks. Except you have a set pattern for how the two bosses, whatever the fuck they are, work. I think this part would have been a little bit better if they didn't always take turns breathing lightning, and instead it was just based on RNG. Only once the head of the train dislodges itself and comes galloping at you does the fight pose a challenge. But honestly, the difficulty for me isn't really that relevant. 
It's not to the point of being a complete face roll, but it's also not annoying, it doesn't take away from the enjoyment of just taking in the scenery and the music. It's taken us a long time to finally get to a DLC boss, but here we are. And the worst of them for me is Glumstone the Giant, but even then, it's a great tier boss. And I'm gonna say something that might piss some people off. Glumstone the Giant first phase is the best first phase in the entire game, and one of the best phases overall. I think it's absolutely perfect. Every single attack has a distinct purpose. I like the gnomes on the floor popping out with a delay, the pillars are great, and I especially like how on Expert some moves will force you off the pillars onto the ground. So in order to not get hit, you have to drop down, run along the gnome floor and jump back to safety. If you time it right, you'll be fine. Also, I really enjoy the animations on the giant, especially his expressions. He looks so gleeful when he finds a bear to use as a weapon, but then upon realizing it wasn't very effective, he's extremely disappointed. That charm does carry over to the hand puppet phase, which is really cute, but I do think it's a significant downgrade otherwise. It's decent, maybe even pretty good, but after an amazing start, it doesn't really contrast all that well. It's just the hand puppets throwing a ball back and forth, but really what makes it a pain is the gnomes jumping out of the ground. And I'm awful at predicting where the ball will go, so even if I don't get gang raped by the gnomes, it's still a mess. Then we get Vord into the final phase, which is a stomach ulcer hag. It's a bizarre ending, but works well enough. It's usually pretty easy, and usually pretty fun, but there are instances where it's bullshit, we just run out of platforms. But still, that doesn't really happen too often. And after so many ridiculous transformations and face transitions, this one still did make me have to stop for a minute to process what the fuck was happening. Also, music is nice, I like it. Woof, woof. Despite Howling Aces being an airplane fight, you're not the one controlling an airplane. Instead, it acts as a tiny platform for you to stand on. I like that you can steer it by standing on either side of the plane's wings. I think the first phase is pretty good, though I think it would be better if there was an actual reason to steer the plane. Instead, it's really just best to keep it in the middle. But I like the puppies, they're adorable. And you can actually avoid murdering them in the intermission phase, as I call it, because it's so easy and brief that I don't really even consider it a proper phase. But if you damage all four at the same time to the point their jetpack smoke turns black, you'll unlock a secret phase. But it's really not worth it. It's an extremely long, boring fight, especially compared to how unique the base version is. In this version, you have the giant flying Dutch hound robot grab your screen and flip it sideways. It breaks the fourth wall, but hey, who plays Carphead for the immersion? It's a unique and creative fight, I've never had to do something like this in a game before. Like I've said before, I find it best to tilt my own head, which feels bizarre to do, but I like it. And in between the flips you have these rapid firing lasers, which, did you know, you can parry some of them? The pink ones? I bet you didn't know that. But I find dodging or parrying them really fun. Steering the plane isn't absolutely necessary, but it does help, so that adds even more value to it. I do think this phase generally carries the rest of the fight. No one's ever gonna talk about how amazing the four puppies barking at you was. No, whenever people talk about loving this boss, they're talking about the finale. Music, however, I think could have been better. It's nice and chill, but does that really fit the high-speed action? I don't think so. Hildeberg is based on the real-life blimp Hindenburg, which tragically went down in flames. Fortunately, we won't need to roast Hilda Berg because I think she's a really great boss. And I think she's even greater on Expert. Normally, her second phase would be a bull, and the third would be either the twins or the archer, and it's up to RNGs which one she picks. However, for Expert, they just scrap the bull and instead she uses both variants of phase 3, and I prefer that. I never cared for the bull anyway. Also, I, I know their constellations, they have names, but I can't be bothered to pronounce them, okay? So they're just bull, twins, and archer, alright? And while every constellation form of hers only has a single attack, the mini blimps that she summons all throughout do add in more variables for each move, so it doesn't get boring. And to ensure that Hildeberg deserves a spot in the great tier, we have her transform into a mechanical moon, but not before absolutely spurking out. <coughs> Keep in mind, someone had to voice that. It came from a human mouth. But the Half Moon is a pretty ideal way to finish off a fight. It's a memorable moment, it looks cool, it's fun figuring out how the UFOs work, how the yellow ones shoot early and the red ones late. It worked so well that they reused that mechanic for Howling Aces. This boss is basically the devs reusing assets that they threw in the bin originally, and yet despite that, the fight isn't trash. 
It's rebuilt into something different, something better. Remember to recycle, kids. The fight starts out and it's already a total chaos, with the spider calling in reinforcements, bombs, caterpillars, and on top of that you have cops trying to bug spray them, but they tend to mostly get in your way. It would be nice if they were a little more effective in fighting the mob, but regardless, it's a great start to the fight. I would even say it's possibly the second best first phase. Either that or Dr. Carl's robot, not sure. It's chaotic but still manageable and above all, fun. I especially like setting off the bombs before they fill the entire screen. There's just something fun about micromanaging all this. Then the ladybug enters the stage with her gramophone and she's just vibing there on her own while I'm frantically trying not to fucking die. Or I could just use the invincibility dash and hug the middle platform corners and get through it within like 10 seconds without breaking a sweat. But I don't really feel good about doing that, it feels a little cheaty. Plus, I like the fight. I think the best thing about the first two stages is how they utilize the three levels of platforms. You have to jump up and down the platforms in order to outrun the sound beam and it's very clean. I don't like how she suddenly spasms out at the end though. I way too often get hit by it since it's so quick. I think the anteater is the weakest part of the fight, but not by a lot. It tends to drag with most shots, but if you use a super at the start and charge for the rest of it, it's not too bad. And I do kinda like how much of an asshole move the secret final phase was. It did get me, and it did annoy me, but at the same time, it's funny. There we go! Nice! nice. What? <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! So overall, each phase is at the very least good. And I like the mob versus police setting, the music is different, but in a good way. Good stuff. Despite being called Freeze, he's probably the least cool DLC boss thematically. I mean, he does have the ability to turn into a snowman, a fridge and a giant snowflake, but for Cuphead standards, that's pretty normal. And I doubt he's going to have the same kind of following as some like Cagney, because he's just an old, bald, fat man with a bucket fixation but he deserves it way more because he's an excellently designed fight. I hate phase one though. It's not bad, but it annoys the fuck out of me on expert. And it's 100% my own fault. I just suck at avoiding the icicle minions. But at the end of the day, it's only a small portion of the otherwise fun bout. Especially the second phase. This might just be the best phase in the entire game. At least top three, I would say. It feels the most dynamic out of all the fights because of the different mix-ups he has. Sometimes he can roll across the stage just once, but sometimes he does it twice. And sometimes he can do a bounce move instead, which punishes you for misreading it and jumping. He can also summon Frostmorns from the floor. Frostmorn hunger. And of course turn into a freezer and spit out ice cubes and popsicles. Every move works together perfectly. Then he turns into a Twitter user and while nothing compares to the previous phase, it is pretty fun. Not the craziest thing ever, but I enjoy it. I especially love the scenery behind him, and as for music, it's grown on me quite a bit. You'd never think this sort of South American music would fit a snow-themed boss, but for some reason it kinda does. <laughs> Given that I used Werner Wurman as an example of a good Cuphead boss, I don't think this placement comes as too much of a surprise. The one thing that I would say keeps him out of the amazing tier is that the first phase is really not the most exhilarating battle of all time. Compare the charge Mortimer Freeze does to that of Werner. Yeah, I know which one I prefer gameplay wise. Even then, just that charge shows the strongest aspect of Werner. The charm, like I mentioned. Like the funny way he screams. <laughs> the way he looks like he has no idea what the hell he's doing when he transitions into phase 2. Which, by the way, is another contestant for best phases in the game. Maybe I should do like a super quick top 10 phases at the end of this video, but I really love this one, as brief as it usually is. There's so much you have to consider, each step you take matters. I think a small thing that really benefits this fight is how you can go through the machine and not just over it. It's risky but can be rewarding if the other option is to get capped. You'll have to keep changing platforms and sides and actually plan ahead a little. It's super frantic and the music, which I love by the way, usually syncs really well with it. It really sells the panic you're likely starting to feel. Then he gets bored, which... really Cuphead? First I was joking about it, but now I'm starting to be a little concerned. But the big pussy is a good enough fight, worse than phase 2 but better than phase 1. I love the ghost mice he summons out of his mouth, which acts as a jail cell for them, and it was a seemingly dark moment when I first saw the cat eat Werner, but as soon as you beat the boss you get the awesome reveal that it was all according to plan after all. 
We're at last in the highest tier possible, but Chef Salt Baker is the lowest possible amazing tier boss. And that's because the first phase is a motherfucking cock sucking dick in the ass on expert. Instead of one yellow piece of shit clinging to the ceiling, you have two yellow pieces of shit. And you also have even more of everything else the chef sends at you. And I'm gonna be frank, it's too much. And I'm saying this as someone who has S ranked the boss and done it without taking damage. I had to switch from my TV to a laptop because my TV screen was straight up too big for me to be able to see everything at once. I don't like how you have to keep an eye on things happening at the bottom of the screen, as well as things happening at the top of the screen. I like it from a visual standpoint, and it's just funny how suddenly dark the game got. But this one I think they should have kept the way it was on regular. That version of this phase I'm completely fine with. But I still think Expert is the superior version of Salt Baker because I love the increase in difficulty in the second form. It's by far the best part of this fight, it never gets tedious for me. It's fast paced, you always have shit to dodge. You always have to be mindful of when the flames will jump up and which one's turn it is to jump. And this time everything is easier to keep track of. Positioning is always important, especially since I like using Crackshot for this, so I want to get in as close as possible. It's beautiful. I love this fight. But after that, Salt Baker breaks apart and what remains of the fight is a little underwhelming to be honest. First he just does this brief little dance and it feels more like an annoying King Dice minion than anything else. But it's over so quickly, so it doesn't really matter. Then in the background you see a giant salt tornado monster coming out of Salt Baker's shell and it's badass. But instead of fighting that, you're up against a little pink piece of shit. It doesn't even attack, it just goes back and forth while you're climbing up pieces of glass. But while the quality of the faces is inconsistent, it's consistently the coolest boss in the entire game. Every frame of every moment is perfectly drawn and animated. And for gameplay, phase 2 is enough to satisfy me. When the game first came out, the devil was by far the buggiest main game boss. Ever since it's been patched, it's the best main game boss. And it's not even close. It starts out strong, he's got a ton of cool animations and transformations. He can turn into a spider, a goat and a serpent, all of which fit thematically. Then he takes off the fursuit and jumps right down into hell where furries belong. I love the reveal and how the music changes though. It's just this giant evil grin that fills the entire screen, it's horrible. What follows is a decent enough warm up. You just jump around on some platforms while avoiding the occasional burning poker chip and hatchet. I do like the mechanic of the earwax bombs exploding if you don't parry them. And then upon taking enough damage he gets pissed off and brings in support. And if Mortimer's second phase isn't the best in the game, then this one is. I wouldn't like phase 2 a whole lot on its own, but I like it in context for the next one. It's nice it starts out slow with more platforms. But now all you have left is three platforms while there's enemies spawning both left and right, and also right above you. You have to kill the minions, dodge the bats, kill the bats, dodge the skulls, dodge the poker chips, and also hit the boss. It's extremely chaotic, but completely fair and 100% fun. And it's also got the best soundtrack in the game by far. I do like how at the end he's crying with the ugliest face possible, but other than that, it's either really easy or really annoying, and it's always going to be annoying as Chalice. Moo. Esther Winchester is my favorite boss and I've been trying to hold off on saying that in the previous DLC videos I did, so I'm glad to finally reveal that. And it seems I'm not alone on loving the boss, plenty of comments have shared that sentiment. I'm glad to see that. I think this boss is just a perfect cuphead boss. She starts out riding a portable saloon while shooting snake oil at you as if they were revolvers, which is fun. And she has a move where she lassos a poor giant cactus who did not ask to be dragged into any of this. The flying cows and vultures are obviously just there to ensure that there's enough challenging mechanics, but hey, they did their job. But for the rest of the fight there are no minions at all, just the boss herself. I love how smooth her transition into phase 2 is though. She just sucks it all in and starts running and sliding on her spurs while unsucking safes full of cash. Also, the music tends to amp up by this point of the fight and I always like when they do that. But eventually her vacuum cleaner malfunctions and she sucks herself in and turns into a sausage bull eagle monster. That's a thing. See, this is why Mortimer Freeze turning into a fridge wasn't all that outrageous. Because compared to this, what is? It's normal. I used to find this part a pain in the ass, but honestly, after getting better at it, I think it's great. It's the most intense point in the fight. You have to be really quick to react at all times. I like that she switches between flying and galloping and how some of the stakes are parryable. Then she jumps into a tin can and we have a pretty solid end fight. 
She's spewing out ropes of sausages and peppers, and even though I'm a vegetarian, I like it. So with each part of the fight summarized, what's the big hook? Why do I love it so much? Well, it has all the qualities I mentioned that I want at the start of the video. The gameplay is solid in every single phase. There isn't a single L phase. The music is one of my favorites in the game. Again, Howling Aces is an example of a fight that doesn't benefit from its soundtrack, whereas this one absolutely does. It really sells the action. The visuals are also top tier. It's animated really nicely, and the backgrounds are some of the prettiest ones in the game. And it's one of the funnier, wacky bosses as well. So, really, what's not to love? Alright then, that was every carpet boss, minus mini bosses like Devil and Angel and the chest challenges. I don't think it's really fair to rank those in the same video as multi-phase bosses. So overall, Cuphead rarely had amazing bosses, but the fact that the worst bosses are still decent tier, and most of them are either good or great, is amazing. So next time I'll probably try the worst shot challenge, which I'm definitely looking forward to. I was originally going to have the voting take place on Patreon, but not enough subscribed for that to work, so... Instead, I'll have the voting take place in my Discord server, which you're free to join as long as you're over the age of 13. And look, before you cast your vote, I love Twist Up. I think it's the best shot in the game. I don't see why people think it's bad. So if you want me to struggle, I recommend voting something else like Crack Shot. 